Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am Daniel, this is Daniel Teaches, the psychology student, bringing you his two cents from his lectures, his personal anecdotes, current events, and the psychology behind it all. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well, I hope you're doing safe, I hope life is treating you good. Look, as you can tell from the title of this video, let's talk about what happens. Let's talk about boundaries, let's talk about rules, let's talk about trespassing and setting a precedent. Right now, as you listen to this podcast, Russia has already attacked Ukraine, and the world is aware of it because of social media. Look, this podcast is not about, it's not about politics. It's about the psychology within. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the psychology of an individual and what happens when we push boundaries from the age of a child how we see that in employees at work and how we see that in our relationships. And once we can understand that at the micro level, the individual, understanding it on the macro of how Russia invades Ukraine and what that means for the rest of the world, I think it'll be a whole lot more insightful. Okay, ready? When you are a kid, when you are one years old, two years old, how do you understand what is and is not okay? Studies say that our brains don't finish developing until we're about 24, 25, give or take. So how does a two-year-old understand what's okay and what's not okay? How do they understand it's not okay to leave the house by themselves or to touch a hot stove or to eat as much chocolate as they can? You're going to say, well, Daniel, mom and dad tell them. It's like, okay, like, go on, right? I'm assuming you don't mean they elaborately sit there and go, look, like two-year-old Sally, if you eat too much chocolate, you're going to get a stomach ache. And not only that, if you have a stomach ache, you're not going to be able to eat food and that's going to make you upset. They're not going to articulate their thoughts in that manner they're gonna have watch sally eat one piece of chocolate and then when she reaches for the second they're gonna grab her hand look at her and sternly say no that's enough chocolate and they're gonna do that about 5 10 15 20 times so then what little two-year-old sally does she associates every second chocolate with a stern look on mom and dad's face and a tone of no look if you have a pet it doesn't have to understand the word necessarily. If you say, hey, come, let's go, no. Look, what matters is, is the tone, right? The tone, it sets the mood, right? Because there's a difference when you're with your partner, you're like, hey, no, stop it, come on, stop it. That's totally different than, hey, stop it. I'm not gonna ask you again, right? These are different messages that you're giving. So you do that with kids, that's how they learn. When we are kids, and the way that we understand what is and what is not okay is we push the boundary. So I keep taking chocolates until mom and dad tell me I can't, right? If you're a child, you will push the envelope as far as you can and see how much will mom and dad let me get away with before they push back, before they call me out on it. And this is where parents do a huge impact on shaping their kids, right? Maybe the kid says, well, look, if I dance, is mom and dad going to say anything? No, okay, I guess I can dance. What if I run up and down? Are they gonna say anything? No, all right. What if I start throwing things? Oh, oh, all right, dad got mad, all right. Let me, maybe it was a coincidence. Let me throw things again. Oh, he got mad again. Let me throw things again. Oh, he got mad again. So now, at a young age, they understand how much can I do? How much can't I do, right? What are the rules of the relationship exactly? And we're gonna push them. You take that young kid, 10, 11 years old, you put him in wrestling. You start wrestling with someone else. You figure out, okay, how hard can I go so that me and you have fun I beat you, but it doesn't end with you crying, right? Because if, if I win, but then the next day you don't want to wrestle with me anymore, like that's terrible, right? I don't want that. So how far can we both push each other to the point where we both has a, have as much fun as possible, but we lower the risk of harm as much as possible? That's another way. You take that individual, you put them in a classroom, you got 30 kids, you got a teacher. One kid's on his phone. The teacher doesn't say anything. Your silence says, I tolerate this behavior, this is fine. So other kids pull out their phone. Maybe someone talks back to the teacher. Maybe people start doing their own thing in class. People start walking out. People will keep pushing the boundaries and it is the teacher's job, just like it is the coach at wrestling school, just like it is the parents at home to set the boundaries and go, this is okay, this is not okay. And silence will be looked at as okay, because there's nothing wrong with this. Same thing with lifeguards at a swimming pool. We see this in the same regard of in an employer at work, right? If there is workplace bullying, if there is harassment of some kind, an employee will check the waters and see, well, well what do the higher-ups say? 
If it's nothing, then game on. I can keep doing what I'm doing. But if there's backlash, not only is it bad for me, but it sets a precedent for everyone. Hey, we heard you make those comments towards so-and-so. That is not okay. If we hear that again, man, you're going to be gone for a one month suspension. Understood? And that echoes and everybody hears and they go, oh, okay, that's the law, right? You got to push the boundaries and then you figure out what it is. For kids, it's 100% normal and it's actually encouraged. Look, look, push the law. See what you can get away with, right? It's normal, what I, what I mean. It's a, it's a natural thing. See what's okay to do, you know? Push another kid and have him push you and like then you'll find out, hey, this is a playful push and it's okay and it's not hard and this is too much, right? At this point, this isn't fun anymore. I'm being a bully, right? I want to be a playmate. I don't want to be a bully. Again, you learn that. Relationship, you're a girlfriend, your boyfriend does something and it irritates you. You go, ah, it's not a big deal. I'm going to compromise. But then he does it again. And then he does it again. And then he brings up the ante. One more and one more and one more and one more. And eventually it's going to be how much do you take before you push back? There's a sentence that I love. And the sentence is this. Comp let, me, let me make sure I hit this well. Compromise where you can. And where you can't, don't. You know, the old Adam, you know, you give him an an inch they'll take a mile give them a little bit come yeah you, you want to do this absolutely you know you want to go out on a five-hour fishing trip with your buddies dear husband go for it you know oh you want to go out for a five-hour fishing trip three four five days of the week yeah i don't think so buddy you're getting on my nerves now so it's that beautiful world where compromise means honesty and boundary settings you want to do blank this is how i feel towards it I'm fine with you doing X, but Y is too much for me. I'm not comfortable with doing Y. I don't want to do this, right? And, and it turns into a negotiation where both of you can satisfy one another. Sometimes one person satisfies the other more, depending on the day, but it's a giving. You, you are in the, Chris Rock said it best, folks, a relationship, you are in the giving industry, right? You're giving. You're providing a service to one another, but not like formally, you know, it's you want to, not because you have to. So, what happens is we push and then we see what the consequences are. And if there aren't any consequences, or if the consequences are, are good, we will continue. If you are the president of a nation and you want to invade another nation, what do you do? You do the same thing that the baby does, the student does, that the kid in wrestling class does, that the boyfriend does, that the, the employees do at work. You think about the consequences and you go, how far can I push this before I get backlash? What if I cut ties with Ukraine? Does anything happen? No, we're good, okay. What if I start uh, making sanctions and uh, charging Ukraine extra for these resources? Does anything happen? No, we're good, all right, great. What if I invade Ukraine, what happens? And what we've seen now is that the first thing that the world did was they had sanctions. Sanctions upon sanctions. We don't condone this, this, and this. Now, look, Putin's sitting back and he's going, let me see what the consequences are. How far can I push this before the world strikes back? Regardless on what you think about the event, if we don't do anything, if America, if Canada stays silent and this happens, what are we communicating by our silence? If we turn our back to it and say, yeah, yeah, what else is happening? Who cares? How does Russia invading Ukraine impact me? It impacts a lot of things. And it's not just, oh, gas prices going up. No, no, no. It's, it's you are setting a precedent for what the world would do. This is no different than you're in a high school and you see a bully going that starts picking on somebody. And it starts beating this kid to a pulp. And you're going, well, look, it's not going to influence me. It's like, it won't. Are you not setting a standard in this school that says, if someone's getting picked on, I will turn away. Or I will look, I will say, I condemn you from far away, but I'm not going to intervene. You've just created a narrative that says, if a bully shows up, that's okay. This is as far as I'm willing to go. And guess what the bully does? He goes, it's free game. Because you've just told them that they're allowed to push it. This is the same thing. If you stand back, what we're communicating to them is, look, even though we condemn it, we're not going to get involved directly. We're going to let you do it. 
What do you think that says about other countries? What if China's thinking about invading someone? And they're saying, look, I'm worried about the backlash. Let's watch what happens with Russia. Doesn't NATO step in? Do other, other countries step in? Because if it goes well for them, maybe we can invade. What does that say about Iran wanting to invade another country? So this is going to set a precedent for all those other countries and for future uh, battles, for future invasions. Way back when, when Hitler was first invading, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the first country that he invaded was Poland. And it wasn't until he invaded one country or two countries that Britain and France said, look, man, we strongly condemn you. Please don't invade other countries. And then he invaded Belgium and he invaded Netherlands. And he had four, five, six countries invaded before they said, okay, man, enough is enough. We're coming in. If I punch someone in the face and you don't say anything, that tells me that that behavior is okay. This is the exact same thing that we see on the macro. Look, I'm interested in the individual, right? And, and in the macro, it's very complicated. There could be a plethora of reasons why they're doing this. Some hypotheses are going, look, Ukraine is getting a little bit more democratic and the worry is that if the democratic sweep takes over Ukraine, it'll come for Russia next. That's one theory. But look, my interest is in the individual, right? And what this means and why this happens. And if we look at all forms of life, how do we learn? We push boundaries. What is okay? What isn't okay? What jokes are okay? What jokes are not okay? We have someone who sets the boundary. And oftentimes we find ourselves in a classroom or driving on the road. There is someone who is above us. There's an authority, whether that be a police, whether that be a professor, whether that be your parents. But in this position, it's a little tricky to find out who is the main authority. We would like to think it's the United Nations. We would like to think it is NATO. And it's going to be very interesting to see what NATO does. Because it's Ukraine right now. But just like that kid getting bullied in school, maybe it's going to be you tomorrow. Maybe next week, maybe a year or two years after. I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you dare try to stop me, see what happens. Now this gets interesting. Do you intervene? Who intervenes? How much do you intervene? Is it America's responsibility to intervene? Is it the rest of Europe's responsibility to intervene? Who's, who should burden that? Maybe you say everybody. Well, say, you know, I think a little bit of responsibility falls on everyone. Unfortunately, what happens to the bully and the kid in high school is the majority of the people, they look away. And they say, look, I'm not a bully. I'm a bystander. Like, oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, good. You didn't mug anybody, but you just stood there and watched as it happened. Yeah, what a, what a great person you are. Right? Because tomorrow when the bully comes after you, guess what all those people are going to do? They're going to watch you. So when things like this happen, folks, this is how a war happens. And that's not me trying to exaggerate and overly dramatize what's going on, but it's one country attacks another, then an ally gets involved from country A, then an ally gets involved from country B, sanctions start happening. Then we have what, what was called during the Cold War, that it was called uh, proxy wars between America and Russia. Whereas I don't attack you directly, but I attack you indirectly. I attack your ally. I attack a trade route that's very important to your resources to do you know, X. Or I know that you need Iran to do something, so I'm gonna attack Iran so Iran can't help you. So it's, it gets very complicated. What you need to know is this. What we do in public has an effect, not only on the person we're doing it to, but on our allies, and also on the other person's allies. Because what we're saying is, if you do this, I will do this. If this happens, then I will do this. And if you take that sentence stem, you can apply it to almost anything. If my wife cheats, then I will leave her. If this country invades my ally, then I will invade them. If one of my students is being too rough towards the other students, then I will discipline them. And what you do I really, really want to drill this note home. It's not just about you, but it's how the world sees you. What happens to Ukraine matters, and it's important. 
And thank God for social media so that we can see it and that we're aware of it and we know what's going on. And even though you might not directly feel impacted, once, again, the key is to break it down. We talked about the individual, and now you can take a step back and think about, look, this is how it works in the macro. It's no different. It's that kid, that two, three-year-old kid trying to push the boundaries and see what can I get away with before I get disciplined, before I get pushed back. And maybe discipline isn't enough. Maybe that two, three-year-old kid is now 14, 15, adolescent, the hormones are crazy. He has a back and forth with mom and dad. He shuts the door in dad's face. He has a screaming match. He runs away from home. That stuff happens. So it's very likely that there'll be some pushback to Russia, which we're seeing with sanctions and whatnot, but you know, it's not as direct. And, and then we'll have to see what, what Russia does. And if they back down, I think that says a lot about Russia. I think it says a lot about the United Nations. It says a lot about NATO. It says a lot about the security and the trust that countries have with one another. But if Russia does not back down and the United Nations or NATO refuses to escalate or to better assist Ukraine, what does that say about countries? in how much they truly be willing to defend one another. Whether it's because you care about that country or whether it's because you care about yourself. If I'm in high school and some kid's getting the, the smokes beaten off him, maybe I help him because it's the right thing to do. Or maybe I help him because I go, look, that guy's going to come beat up me next. So I might as well go and help the guy so we can both two on one him. Or, so again, it can be for selfish interests. It can be for other interests. But the importance is that no matter what happens, whether Russia takes Ukraine, whether Russia doesn't take Ukraine, how much the supposed allies of Ukraine intervene will all impact us, our countries, the diplomatic relations within. And if you're looking at things like world wars, folks, this is how they happen. Because if the allies come in, if NATO comes in, if we do something a few years down the line, People are going to think back, oh, remember when Russia invaded, this is what happened. And they're going to use that as a huge basis for what to do next. You know, you look, America was silent. They didn't do anything. We don't have to worry about them. They didn't want to get involved. So we can learn a lot about boundaries and about pushing. The first step, I always say it's awareness. It's realizing where you are, realizing what the environment is. And again, it's totally normal from a evolutionary sake that the individual wants to test their boundaries. What's okay for me to say? What's not? You're a young kid. You're 17 years old. You have your first girlfriend. What's okay to say? What's not okay to say? Can I make this joke? Is that okay? Okay. Can I put my arm around you? Does that make you uncomfortable? Like you, it's just you're negotiating. You're, you're testing boundaries. You're negotiating. You're talking about compromising where you can, and you don't compromise where you can't. And this way, we learn about each other. We learn about ourselves. We learn about the other person, and thus it helps us better interact with our society and with our environment. So for anyone sitting there going, yeah, yeah, like this Ukraine and this Russia stuff doesn't matter. I plead you, look at it through the individual. Look at it on the micro and I promise you it matters a lot. I promise you it has a lot of influence. It just depends on how you look at it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, folks. My name is Daniel. This is Daniel Teaches. I appreciate you listening on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube. Thank you so, so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and stay safe. Bye-bye.